Oh, it's not for the math. Easy solution. Turn scores further into integration using computer algebra systems or CAS. And now go over example four of the example series. And I'll go over this example, which states if f of x equals to x plus 60 times sine the power of 4 of x times cosine the power of 5 of x, then find the antiderivative f of x or, or capital F of f such that f of 0 equals to 0 or the integral. This antiderivative is the same thing as integral of the function here, etc. dx, and that's this right here, f of x. And and then uh, this will make uh, this will be more clear as I get through to the example where f capital uh, yeah a capital f of zero equals zero, and also say it's graph f for uh, x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to five, and also ask where does f have extreme values in other words local min or max, and also inflection points and you can learn more about inflection points and extreme values in my earlier videos on graphing um, functions. So now if we were to just pull up an internet browser and search for a CAS, in this case, like I showed my earlier videos, you could just search for integral calculator, and there's many different, uh, these all use uh, computer algebra systems to solve it. Let's try this one, this one's a pretty good one. So if I go x plus 60 times it by sine power of four, I think it's power of four, yeah, it's power of 4 times it by oh, oops, of x times it by cosine of x power of 5. And again, you can put the power in front or in, in, in front like this or behind. doesn't matter. This calculator auto fixes it like this. And then if I click go, it will solve it. And there is our integral right here. And also, uh, there's also a graph of it right here. So as you can see, this graph, if I zoom in and out, go uh, go from 0 to 5. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, fix it up like this. So 0 to 5, it'll zoom in all the way, something like this. So if we were to copy this. So yeah, here, if we paste the result, I'll paste the, um, the graph soon. So basically, you have this. And now, th if this is the integral, but we want to know when f capital F of zero equals to zero. So this equals to zero when, well, if we plug in this zero inside, this sine goes to zero, sine is zero, 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 and then this x squared is zero. There's no other thing but a c. So this means that c equals to zero. So basically, the function is this without a constant. So this has to go to zero. And that's our function right there. So just basically uh, f of x where the constant is 0. Yeah. So yeah, here is a uh, copy and paste of the graph that we were just uh, moving around earlier. So basically to obtain the extreme points, in other words, local min or max, we need to graph its derivative and find when it is equal to 0. So this is our integral f of x. The derivative of it is going to equal to well the small case f of x which we are which we were given so so we have this one so we need to set this equal to zero and that's the red one right here as you can see whenever this crosses this that is our uh, extreme point right there and as you can see from here uh, this scale the way it works this is a one this goes to two and then this is three so the only time it crosses zero is over here, and as you can see from this graph, there's a local max right there. Local max, and again, there's a local min right here now. And at this point right here, this is at x is roughly equal to, let's say, 2.3. And at this point, let's say x is roughly equal to 2.5. So this means basically at x is roughly equal to 2.3, there's a local max. So I'll write this down, local max, that's our extreme point. And at x is roughly equal to 2.5, this is our local min. So we were only asked to find where these extreme points are, and in other words, find the x values at where they are. And you could tell from this function, it just keeps increasing, there's, so there's no other um, limit here and there's no other extreme point and there's no extreme min or max because as you can see it keeps getting bigger and bigger and this part here goes smaller and smaller
And over here looks like a local min, but that's where our do our uh, rain or domain ends. We're not considering anything less than zero. Otherwise, this would have been a local min at zero. So now to find inflection points, we need to graph the second derivative of f. Uh, in other words, basically find the rate of change of the derivative, like I explained before. And then, so we could look for a cast that solves derivatives online instead of doing this by hand. So basically, we need to find second derivative of f of x, which equals to, well, first derivative of small case f of x. So let's go look for one. I'll just copy and paste this and to save time typing. Go here, search for, let's say, derivative calculator. And just click this one. Yeah, it looks like these same guys that made this website made this one as well. I'll copy and paste this right here. So this will calculate that. Press go. So we get this is our uh, derivative and now here, here is our graph of, well, the derivative uh, of f of x or the second derivative of capital f of x. And we don't need to know this, we already have that graphed. So if we zoom in out like this, so it looks something like this. And we could basically copy this graph into it now. So right here, if we copy this right here, and now we just need to set this equal to zero f of x set it equal to zero or f prime of x equals to zero for the inflection points and these are basically when it goes from concave in and out uh, to uh, op yeah basically concave down concave up or other way around so basically whenever you have a function like this and then this point right here is the inflection point I'll call this IP so and that's when it's zero that's when basically the rate of change yeah, of the derivative is perfectly uh, zero, which means basically it's the, the derivative is, is constant. Yeah, it's constant or a just a perfectly uh, line like that. Yeah, and basically it goes from concaving uh, down right here to concave up. So at that point, and that's when it's equal to zero. So if we go to here, this is our domain from here to here. So again, this is one. This is one right here. This is two. This is three, this is four. So we gotta look whenever it's zero, there's a point right there. So we'll say at x equals two, let's call this one point, I mean point seven. So that's one inflection point. There's another one, let's say right here at roughly 1.3. Let's get another one here. This one's roughly 1.8. And there's one right here at 2.4. Uh, and then there's one here, we'll call this 3.3. .3. And then there's one more in our range, in our domain right here. This one is, uh, it's about 3 point, let's call it um, 3.8. Yeah, it's 3.8. My calculus book says 3.9 roughly, but it's the same thing. I'll put 3.9. So we have these are basically the inflection points. And now when we look at this, yeah, when we look at the f of x function, so if we go, these are 0 0.7, 1 0.3, 1 0.8, 2.4, 3.3, 3 3.9. So if we go here, 0 0.7, as you can see, this is the, so if the blue is the capital f of x, that's the integral. So as you can see at this point, actually at point 0.7 is right about here. So as you can see, it's concaving, uh, it's switching the con uh, the concaving up to concave down. And there's one here where it's it's starting to go back up. And also right over here where it's well going up and going back down. So every time it switches, and the last one was what, 3.9 I think, or this is 4. Yeah, if this is the 4, then yeah, basically right over here, as you can see, it's again going, it's it's curving like that. So it's going from concave up to concave down. Yeah, so anyways, that's uh, pretty much for today. Hopefully you learned from this, uh, this pretty useful example on, on basically just using online casts and also finding a derivative calculators, integral calculators online. You could do solve these quickly, make graphs it quickly, finding all the um, f different properties of functions. 
Anyway, that's all for today. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.